Hey there, I'm Sammy and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video, I'm restoring a timeless dresser. Now this is a fun yet super satisfying flip that I can't wait to share with you guys, so let's jump right in. This is the piece we're starting off with. She definitely has some really good bones, has some scuffs here and there. This one does not have a maker's mark on it, but boy, am I in love with the hardware. So I will definitely be keeping that and restoring it later on, but I am so excited to restore this piece and give it a new life. Man, it is toasty today. I am so ready for this fall weather to kick in, like now. But it's time to get started on this piece. And this may surprise you, but I'm not starting off by sanding and I'm actually going in with a scraper because this is my new best friend and I don't know how I lived my life without one this long. So going in with this bad boy, I can already tell by looking at this piece that it has a really thick finish on top. So this is going to help a lot minimize that sanding time. We're gonna scrape the majority of this piece as much as I can cover and then I'll go in later and sand it. It's gonna cut back on sanding time. It's gonna be a lot easier, honestly more satisfying. So let's get to work. I will say this was the most satisfying part of this flip. Being able to scrape off this old finish and see what was underneath was one, so quick, but two, so satisfying. So enjoy this. It was getting a bit messy, so in between scraping, I got out my vacuum, vacuumed up the little crumbs, and then kept on scraping. I wanted to cover every area that I could, and some areas came off super easily. Some I had to use a little more effort into getting the old finish off, but I went over every inch of this piece wherever I could, and this is making the sanding process that much easier. Now, like I said, a lot of areas came off really easy, so it was worth my time to just take the scraper, scrape everything I could, and then sand the rest later. Some areas that gave me a little bit more trouble, I did kind of skip over those and just sanded them later. While I was scraping, I noticed a little piece of veneer that was loose on the front, so I just grabbed a little bit of glue. I put that in there with a little plastic spatula, and then I used a piece of tape on top of it to secure it while it dried. Now let's take the hardware off. Ta-da, that was quick. Then removed all the drawers so I could get to working on those. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life can throw challenges at us sometimes, whether it be stress from work, family, or just feeling a little stuck. And sometimes we need a little bit of help navigating through it. That's where BetterHelp can help. Therapy gives you a safe space to express yourself, learn coping strategies, and get you the support you need to move forward. It's a safe, non-judgmental environment to talk through your feelings and improve your mental well-being. And better yet, this can all be done from the comfort of your own home. And if you're anything like me and you're trying to juggle work, family, and everything in between, you probably don't have a lot of extra time in between to go to another appointment. So let BetterHelp work for you. BetterHelp lets you connect with a licensed therapist from wherever you are on your schedule. You can have sessions through video calls, phone calls, or even text so it really fits in your life, not the other way around. BetterHelp makes getting the support you need even easier. All you have to do is click the link in the description, fill out a quick questionnaire, and you'll be matched with a therapist in as little as a few days. If you ever feel your therapist isn't the right match, you can switch therapists at any time, no charge. So if you're struggling or think that you'd benefit from a therapy session, click the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash DIYwithSammy to get 10% off your first month of therapy. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's get back to flipping. 
Now getting back to it, there were these little round decorative designs on four corners of the dresser. So I got my little spatula, putty knife, whatever you want to call it. I got under that edge and I lifted those out. There was a little pin in the center so I knew if I could just get something under, I could pry those up easily. And I will also be keeping these and restoring these as well because I think they just add to the piece. And when I say I scraped everything, I went just about every inch of this piece with this scraper removing this finish. It was amazing, but I was tired of scraping at the end. I got to scraping the drawer fronts and you'll notice here on some of them the wood grain is going in different directions. So the sides are going in one direction and the center is going in another. I made sure when I was scraping that I was always scraping in the direction of the wood grain. Now you want to do this because you don't want any scratch marks and if you're going against the wood grain you have a really good chance to gouge in that wood, get some scratch marks and we don't want that. So continuing with that wood grain as you scrape is going to give you a nice smooth, scratch-free finish. Alright, well, I've done a lot of scraping and I'm over that now and this is what I've got. I knew this would be annoying to deal with um, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do about it, but I'm going to strip it. I know, like who is she? Using stripper? Not me, but I'm going to. So today's the day, we're stripping parts of this dresser because it's just kind of annoying to scrape. It's going to be real annoying to sand and I think stripper in this case is going to make it easier for me and I'm willing to deal with the mess. So I have some left over. I haven't used stripper in forever because I don't like the mess, especially with this one. But I have so much left that I might as well go ahead and use it. So I think my plan right now is to just use it on these drawer fronts. If I find some areas on the dresser base. I might use it on that. There's some fine lines that I've considered sanding, but I might strip instead. So we'll see. First, I'm gonna apply it to these drawer fronts here where the indent is and this rounded area. I think this flat part here is gonna be easy to sand. So yeah, I'm gonna get this on here, let it sit for a few minutes, and then hopefully that does the trick. And even though it's literally a million degrees outside today, for your protection, kids. Oh! I'm sorry, but maybe that. I'm afraid now. Uh, there was a spider web in here, and. I just put it on. Okay, apparently it's been a minute since I've worn this, mostly because I haven't been here, so. Well, that was disgusting. Okay. I started by applying a good amount on each drawer and I'm using an old brush that I never use. You might think that it looks like a really nice brush, but it's actually hard. I've used it a lot for stain and I want to throw it away anyways. Um, a good brush to use is like a dollar chip brush that you can get from a craft store or Home Depot sells them also. But this is just one I had on hand and was willing to throw away. 
After I got a good amount of that stripper on the surface, I just applied that, making sure everything was covered evenly. All right, it's been a few minutes. I applied it on all the surfaces and I can see it start to crackle. So I feel like it is just about ready. I'm gonna do a little test section, see if it removes as much as I would like it to. And if it does, then I'm gonna get to scraping and removing this stripper from the surface. And we're gonna clean it. I have some mineral spirits that are, this is in a spray bottle. So once I get the majority of the stripper off, I'll go in with the mineral spirits, give it a good scrub so I make sure to remove most of that stripper, and then let it dry and be good for sanding. Yep, mineral spirits. Poop. Well, that brings back bad memories. Not sure if y'all remember when I ruined those nightstands, but I had some long days with those mineral spirits. So then I got out my scraper and I started on the little rounded edges of the drawer fronts, taking off any of that excess stripper and it was removing that finish. So I began scraping and wiping that away. And this was when I started to regret my decision to strip these drawers. I don't know about you guys, but for some reason, and honestly, if it's a thick paint that's coming off, it's fine. But if it's the stain that is not satisfying, it drives me nuts. It's so messy and I just can't do it. It's not satisfying enough for me. It just drives me crazy. So I don't know how y'all strip furniture like this, but I, I am not one of you. I am a sanding girl through and through. Apparently, I just needed to remind myself to never strip anything ever again in my life, so that's fine. I just need a quick reminder that I'm never doing this again. It's fine. Sometimes you just need to like test it out again. At least I didn't do the whole dresser, you know? Did a little section and you guys, I just hate the mess, and it's so tedious. And I know sanding is tedious too, but it's just different. I can deal with the sand. I cannot deal with the goo. I don't know what it is. I can't do it. I can't do it. It's not for me, and that's fine. I've come to that conclusion once again. I will say it made the detailed areas on the dresser come off really easily right here. I just got my little scraper, it had a pointed end, it got right in that groove and it came off really easily and then I scraped off that excess stripper because it had dried on there. And then when I went to sand it, it was all fine. to make some progress now on the sanding <laughs> and I'm gonna start with the drawers because I feel like if I sand the drawers and see those getting finished I'll feel more productive so starting off on the drawer fronts I'm just doing the flat ones first I'm going in with a 120 grit sandpaper to get off the bulk of this finish we removed a lot of it with the scrapers so I just want to get the rest of it off and then we'll go in later with the 220 grit to finish it off but this should do the trick. It should be super simple to sand. And hopefully it's quick because it's hot and I don't want to wear this mask. of this then I'm gonna start working on the curved drawer fronts and 
hopefully gonna get this done and finish this project up today. I feel like it's pretty simple. I can do this. So let's get sanding now. It's so freaking hot out. It's not even that hot. It is so ridiculously humid. Last week it was a dream. Like the weather was perfect. It was like the 60s in the morning and then it got warmer throughout the day and it was like no humidity. But now the second I wanna work outside, it's like boom. We're gonna give you all the humidity that you never wanted. That's where I'm at. Any small detailed areas I couldn't get to with my large sander, I just grabbed a piece of sandpaper, folded that in half, and that got in that groove really well and removed that old finish. Um, okay, I've done what I can uh, as far as sanding goes with my round orbital sander and I am now working on the detailed sanding. I'm hand sanding the little areas I need to and then I'm going to go in with my festival orbital sander, the square one, and get all the legs sanded down and then we're going to work on the drawers and then I think sanding is done after that. So. Also, I wanna know, for those of you who strip furniture, or work on furniture in general, do you like using stripper? If so, what kind of stripper do you use? Because I despise stripping. I haven't done it in like forever, and people ask me all the time, why don't I strip things? And <laughs> this is why. Because I don't, I thoroughly do not enjoy it. I would much rather spend all of my time sanding than dealing with the mess of stripping. Unless it's like the most satisfying thing ever, like you're scraping old paint that's just like peeling off like a dream, that's not worth it for me. So I wanna know, if you strip furniture, do you enjoy it? And would you rather do it than sanding everything? And what kind of stripper do you use? Because I want some recommendations, so thanks. on this corner here that the veneer is damaged and I'm gonna go in with this putty. It's the Mohawk putty stick so it's got color on the outside, hardener on the inside. I'm gonna cut off a small piece of this because it is the tiniest little corner. Mix it up as well as we can. It really just takes a few minutes to dry like maybe 10-15 to 15 minutes depending on the weather where you're at and then it's ready to sand. I also love this because you can mold it to any shape that you want so you can really pile it up whereas Bondo kind of levels out on whatever kind of surface you're applying it to and you can't like build it the first layer you apply you'd have to apply multiple layers the stuff you can just stack it up so if your corner's missing you can totally build up that whole corner and it will dry which is what's going on here then going in with my festival square orbital sander wow that was a mouthful i went over the recessed areas on those three drawers getting off the finish that i could and then whatever i couldn't i just grabbed a piece of sandpaper and hand sanded the rest Then as always, going in with my air compressor, spraying everything down, getting rid of the majority of that dust left on the surface before we move on to the next step. Okay, 
All right, time to finish this piece off. I'm gonna go in with an early American stain, but before I do that, I'm going in with a pre-stain because I feel like this may be a little bit splotchy if I were to just go in with a stain, and it's a liquid stain and not a gel stain, so it's a little bit less forgiving than a gel stain would be. So I'm just gonna be safe. We're gonna hit everything with this pre-stain, let it sit for a minute, and then go in with our stain. So I've just got a little rag here. I'm gonna grab some gloves and get this applied over the entire dresser. Okay, so I'm getting this applied and I don't love it. And I don't really want to apply this on the rest of the dresser and then not only love the outcome. I'm going for a darker look on this. I want it to, I want to bring out some more depth in this piece, give it some more character. And I thought this stain would make it a little bit darker and it's not. So I'm going with a different one. I thought about going with a gel stain, but I'm not going to do that either. Um, I'm going in with a Minwax red mahogany stain and I think this is going to give it the color that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go over the top of this, see how it looks, and then decide from there. Yeah, this is what I want. Alright, so I finished getting the stain on it yesterday. I let it sit and cure overnight, and now it's time to finish it off. So I'm gonna finish it off with a wipe on poly. This is in a satin finish, but before I do that, I have one more step. And there's a little area on the top of this that I filled with some putty that I need to go ahead and touch up. So I'm going in with my paint touch up kit and my paint brushes. I'm gonna go touch that up. It's gonna dry for a little bit, and then we'll get this wipe on poly over everything. Also, the weather here is so good. Like, I'm in pants and a shirt, and I'm not sweating, so I'm good with that. And I hope it stays like this. All right, I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see what's going on. So I got out my little plastic palette here. This is actually a lid to a container of tape, but you know what? It works. So I usually start off with the lightest color. Sorry, it's hard to see and I kept going in and out of focus, but I start with the lightest color and then build from there until I get the desired shade and look. Okay, so because I just touched up the paint on the top of this, I'm going to start with the drawers, applying this wipe on poly. I'm going to go in with a rag, apply a really light layer, and it takes a couple hours to dry, and we'll see how many coats we want to apply to give it the finish that I want. Um, it should give a satin finish, but the more coats you apply, the shinier and glossier it's going to be. So. Keep that in mind. I'm gonna go maybe two coats on this is what I'm guessing. Maybe you can go three, four. Um, I think typical is around two to three coats though. I did go ahead and do two coats here because I felt like that was giving me the finish that I wanted.
Then I got everything inside and I'm gonna go ahead and oil all of the drawers inside and out as well as the drawer glides so those glide really smoothly. Honestly, this takes like just a few extra minutes, maybe like 10 to 15 minutes at most, but it can add so much to this piece. And ask yourself this question, if you were restoring this dresser for yourself, would you want the drawers to be oiled and restored? I think the answer would be yes, so just go ahead and do it. Next, I'm getting these decorative pieces put back on. So I saved the little tacks that went in them. I got those set back in and then I lightly hammered them in back in place and they fit just fine and they were nice and tight. Then I got the drawers back in and it was time to get the hardware back on and you might be thinking, wow, those are looking so shiny. And yeah, I did clean them and I'm sorry I didn't show you. I will one of these days. Sometimes I'm just like in the groove and the lighting in my kitchen sucks. But here's my trick. I take all my hardware inside. I get a big bowl that I usually fill with my dirty hardware and I put some baking soda, vinegar, and then I boil water and I pour that over it. I let that sit. And then I get out some rubber gloves, a toothbrush, and I scrub it with some barkeeper's friend, rinse them off nice and clean, and they are shiny just as new like this. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think this is one of my favorite pieces I have flipped. And I think it's because of this hardware, I am just in love. So getting this piece staged, I added a few simple items. And now I wanna take you guys back to the beginning so we can see what it looked like when we started off. So that we can really appreciate what it looks like now. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you really enjoyed this video. This was a fun one for me to restore, but put it, I remind myself how much I hate stripping furniture. As always, I'll leave a profit breakdown in the description below, as well as a list of my most used tools and products. So go check it out if you're interested. But as for now, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.